What's up FLS investors and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be walking you through how to use my investment portfolio tracker in Google Sheets. It's designed to help you easily keep track of your portfolio value, investment performance and dividend income without having to manually calculate everything yourself. I'll show you how to enter your data, update it over time and use the charts and metrics to get a clear picture of your progress towards your investing goals. The download link for the tracker is in the video description. Feel free to download it and upload it to your own Google Drive to follow along with this video. Let's open the tracker and get started. The tracker is split into three tabs. Firstly, you have the stock stash. This gives you a display of all the information regarding your portfolio and does have some minor input required. Secondly, we have metrics. This is where the bulk of your data entry will be done. And then lastly, we have div metrics. This is where I keep track of the dividend payments month on month, year on year. Let's start with the stocks dash tab, as this is the easiest to input. In this tab, you'll input the ticker symbol, the type of investment, number of shares, average price, and the monthly gain or loss. You'll notice that straight away that the ticker symbols are sectioned into US and UK stocks. I'll explain why in a second. Firstly though, all you need to enter in the ticker symbol field is the ticker symbol as it appears on the Google Finance website, as it will pull the value of the stock from Google Finance. You will see here that if I enter the ticker symbol for Apple, AAPL, it will take a second, but will eventually pull through the price and the conversion to GBP for that stock. This is where the sectioning between US and UK stocks comes into play. The conversion field only applies to the US stocks. That is because in order for the other formulas to work, the value needs to be in GBP. Now at this point, all you need to do is enter the total number of stocks you own. Let's say I own four, and then add the average price. Let's say that's a hundred pound. You can see that the rest of the fields fill in automatically. The US stock section is that simple. Moving on to the UK stock section, it operates very similarly. There is however, one caveat with the ticker symbols. When looking for the ticker symbols on Google Finance, one thing to note is how the price is displayed. If we use VWRL as an example, you can see here that the price is displayed normally in pounds. But if we look at National Grid, for example, we can see that the price is displayed in GBX. I'm not sure why that is, and I didn't look into it. If I was to just enter in NG as the ticker symbol in the investment tracker, you can see that the price is not returned correctly. There are two things that need to be done to correct this. Firstly, you will need to prefix the ticker symbol with LON. In this example, it would be LON colon NG. Secondly, you will need to go to the price field and add forward slash 100 to the end of the existing formula. Now this change only needs to be made on ticker symbols that require the LON colon prefix. You can see from the VWRL price formula it does not require it. Now, the rest of the process is the same. Enter the number of shares you own and the average price, and the rest is taken care of. Lastly, on the stocks dash tab is the month by month gain or loss. If we scroll to the bottom, you can see it's currently empty. All I do is manually enter the gain or loss into the respective monthly year field. It's conditionally formatted, which means that it will change the color of the cell based on the value of the number entered. The reason I have this section is just for my own love for pattern recognition. If we scroll up, it does automatically calculate the yearly figure. Other than that though, it doesn't impact any of the other figures found on the dashboard. Now moving on to the metrics tab, the meat and potatoes of the investment tracker. In reality, there isn't actually much to it. Let's start with the portfolio value and total invested value data. These fields will impact the portfolio value scorecard chart on the dashboard tab. You can see here if I change those values to 1,300 pound and 1,050 pound respectively, you can see on the dashboard it has now changed the values on the corresponding scorecard chart. Next, we're going to amend the retirement gold field. Again, this data corresponds to the age 60 goal scorecard chart on the dashboard tab. All you have to do is change the value in the retirement goal field. For example, if I change it from its current value to say 10,000 pound, you can see it then changes the baseline value next to it, as well as the scorecard on the dashboard. It's that simple. 
Moving on to the average annual return scorecard on the dashboard, this is controlled by two values. Firstly, the year since start should be self-explanatory. Simply change the value to however many years you have been investing for. You can use decimal places if you want. I tend not to. Secondly is setting the baseline average yearly value. Again, just set this to whatever percentage value you want. These two values will be calculated by the average return to date formulas above to generate the data for the average yearly return scorecard. Next, we have the total dividends value. You don't need to touch this as it pulls it from the dividends tab. Lastly, on the metrics tab is the portfolio over time section. This section is for the account value versus unrealized value line chart on the dashboard. There are a couple of things to note here. The chart is set to read the values all the way down to cell 500. So you will just need to keep adding the next values in the sequence as they occur. You do not need to amend the chart. Secondly, the chart will only display properly if it has a sequence of five values, which in this instance would be five months. So if you were starting from month one, don't be alarmed if the chart doesn't display correctly. It will eventually, once it has enough data to fill itself with. Now, in terms of data entry, the month year field is formatted as a date. I usually just double click on this next cell and select the first of whatever month it is. Let's add September. The next two fields are self-explanatory. Just add the total amount you have invested in the account value field. Then your current unrealized value in the next field. Hopefully that will be a, a net positive for you. If we hop back to the dashboard, we can see that it has now updated the scorecards across the top and the line chart below the investment list. Setting up is always the tedious part, but once you have it set up, if you're like me, you'll only need a couple of minutes to update it once a month. Now onto the part of the tracker that brings us all the most joy, the dividend metrics. Here you can log what dividends you receive for the month and keep track of your historical dividend payments. Let's start by filling in some ticker symbols. Now, this red squared grid is conditionally formatted, meaning it is red if there is no value in it, but will change to a light green once a value is entered. So let's add some values in. That's probably enough there to illustrate the formatting. You can see that the totals across the top of each month and the totals down the right hand side of the grid are automatically filled in. Now that's essentially it. If you are not bothered about maintaining the historical data, you could stop there. However, I like to keep the data. So what I would do is after each month passes, I add the total to the bottom grid. As we are in the August 2025, I'm gonna add the values for the previous months this year. You can see the total at the end of each year is calculated automatically. The other option you have, if you feel it's information you would require, is at the end of each year, I will enter the total for each stock to the right of the top grid for the relevant year. So say the year ended today. Let's say it's the 1st of January today. The 2025 total for the ticker symbol O is 36 pound. So I would enter that into the 2025 cell for that stock. And I'll do the same for any other stocks that have given me a dividend. This will help if you want to look back year on year to see how each stock's dividend has increased. And that's it. If we circle back to the stocks dash, you can see that the total dividend scorecard has changed to reflect the input on the div metrics tab. This sheet works best in Google Sheets, so make sure you've copied it into your drive before editing. If you're not familiar with formulas, I would recommend making an additional copy of it just in case you accidentally edit any of the cells with formulas in. I've left those cells unprotected for those that are familiar and want to tinker or tailor it to their liking. So there you have it, your very own spreadsheet sidekick. It is not smart enough to make your tea, but it will hopefully show you your wealth growing over time. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to explain anything in more detail, and hey, if this helped you, consider liking and subscribing for my portfolio updates. This is The Effortless Investor, 
Signing off with a reminder that investing doesn't have to be flashy, just consistent. Keep it simple, keep it realistic, and as always, keep it effortless.